And White House National Security's Communication Advisor, Admiral John Kirby, joins us now. Admiral, good to see you as always. So one week ago today, President Biden predicted there would be a ceasefire and hostage deal by today, by Monday. Some critics wonder if he might have said that with the primary in Michigan with its large Arab American population uh, in mind. Oh, he said that what was in his mind was the uh, the briefings that he had been getting from Jake Sullivan, our national security advisor, uh, Brett McGurk, our coordinator for the Middle East, who had been up to speed on the negotiations and the progress and the hopefulness that we all had that uh, we could get there uh, by today. Obviously, we're not. But I can tell you that negotiations are ongoing as you and I speak, and we're still hopeful that we will be able to get this hostage deal in place sometime very, very soon. Benny Gantz, an Israeli war cabinet official and political rival of the Israeli prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, just met with Vice President Harris and other White House officials. Uh, Gantz's trip to the United States has clearly irked Netanyahu. Uh, Netanyahu even told uh, the Israeli ambassador to the U.S. to not attend the meetings. Um, how much would President Biden prefer Benny Gantz to be the Israeli prime minister? Oh, that's up to the Israeli people, Jake. They get to elect their government and who represents them uh, there in uh, Tel Aviv, and that's, uh, that's really up to them. We respect that. We recognize that Prime Minister Netanyahu is the prime minister, and that's the, that's the gentleman and the leader that, uh, that we're working with. Uh, but Mr. Gantz is a minister of the War Cabinet. Uh, and when a member of the War Cabinet requests to come to Washington to speak uh, to officials here, a national security team, as well as the vice president, uh, hear about an ongoing war, a war in which we are trying to assist Israel, uh, well, my goodness, we're going to have that meeting. We're going to have those discussions. Uh, it's an opportunity to talk about what they're doing on the ground and just as critically, an opportunity to talk about where we're going with this hostage deal and the possible, uh, a, a, a possible increase of, of humanitarian assistance into Gaza. So the Biden administration, the White House is pushing Israel to sign a document saying uh, that no American armaments will be used by Israel uh, other than in, uh, in comporting with international law. Has Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu agreed to sign that document? I'm not aware of whether there's been an actual signature by the prime minister, but the prime minister is well aware that this is a long-standing expectation by, by the United States of America when we provide foreign military assistance to another nation, whether it's uh, through drawdown authority, uh, such as we do or have been able to do for Ukraine or foreign military sales. There's an expectation that they're going to use it uh, the way it was intended to be used and in accordance with humanitarian law. Uh, so this is not any different from it for Israel than it is for any other country. Vice President Kamala Harris's speech on Gaza uh, yesterday uh, was the most forceful public speech by a senior administration official to date when it comes to pushing Israel on the humanitarian crisis. The policy was the same, but her passion was heightened. Did President Biden know she was going to deliver such a statement? Well, certainly the vice president uh, is very, very close to the president. She knows uh, and understands well his deep concern about the humanitarian situation in Gaza, and she was certainly speaking for all of us, uh, about the sense of urgency we feel uh, in order to get assistance to the people of Gaza. I mean, just over the weekend, Jake, as you know, uh, we conducted airdrops out of a few C-130s in coordination with uh, our Jordanian partners. Uh, almost 40,000 meals dropped. There will be additional airdrops. So we are, the president is, uh, very much taking an active role di directly in terms of providing humanitarian assistance uh, in a as fast a possible way as we can into Gaza. This Saturday marked the first U.S. airdrops into Gaza. This one was in coordination with the country of Jordan. But one United Nations top official says, quote, airdrops are good photo opportunities, but a lousy way to deliver aid. A uh, so similar sentiment was shared by the World Food Program Executive Director, Cindy McCain, on the lead in January when I asked her about airdrops. Take a listen. We're talking about a very condensed population to drop aid in could be could be harmful to the people on the ground. You know, WFP has been doing this for 60 years. We know what we're doing and we know what works. And so right now for us and for what we do, trucks are the only way to get help in there right now. Are these airdrops a last resort? They are certainly a, um, an indication of how desperate things are uh, that we are now going to have to resort to airdrops. I mean, it, it's not by any means, and I agree with all those comments, that they're not the ideal way of getting aid into people uh, that are in need. Those trucks, you just can't replicate the size, the scale, the scope, and the speed with which you can get things on the ground. But 
unfortunately, Jake, the numbers of trucks going in just haven't been enough. There hasn't been uh, enough and they haven't been getting in fast enough. And so we're trying to alleviate an urgent need. These airdrops are meant to supplement other ways, predominantly trucks getting in, but we need the Israelis to open up additional border crossings, not just Karim Shalom, but others to, uh, to assist in that ground delivery. So again, we agree, trucks are the best way to do it. It's not the only way to do it. And yes, there are risks when you do airdrops, which is why this first one was done so carefully. Uh, now we'll see what we have to do to expand those going forward, but I do expect you will see additional airdrops from US aircraft in coming days. John Kirby, thanks so much. Yes, sir.